Uh, welcome to the tutorial on how to calculate a simple catenary from a for a mooring wire. So I'll just give a an overview of the uh, just a simple procedure and how, and how we can do that in Orbiflex quickly. Um, if if you're referring to the, the website, we have an example problem with uh, certain input data that we can use as a reference for this problem. So the first step would to be would be to set the project units since we're using SI and metric units. So we'll click on the general tab here under shared data in the model browser and then go to the section where it says units. Underneath that there's a a category called systems and this is where our units can be selected and we are SI because it's metric and hit OK and Orcaflex default is metric so but just in case I would always check and then up next we have to set the water depth which is in the environment uh, t table right here and it's under seabed and this pops up first for us and we can set the water depth using the Z coordinate, which is referenced from the still water line, this blue line right here. And or we can just set the depth by typing it into the depth variable. And we can do this either way and then say see if we wanted to change the depth variable to fifty, it would automatically update the Z variable. Likewise, if we update the Z variable, the depth will update. So I'm just going to type the water depth in the depth variable, which for this example problem will be 100 meters, and hit OK. And up next, we need to model our line or our mooring wire. And we just go up here and click New Line. You can put it anywhere in the model. And what I like to do usually is B will be anchored. And usually A, if I'm just doing a simple problem like this where you only need a line, I'll set this all at the origin of the global coordinate system. And since we're anchored, height above seabed, uh, will have to be updated. But first, before we do that, because that will change, and I'll show you why, let's set our line type, which is right here. That's one way of getting to the line type. Data, or we can double click the line and click on line types down here, and that will also give us access to the line type data. So since we're already here, I'll go ahead and just show you how we'll set our mooring wire automatically by using the line wizard in Orcaflex. So go up here to the top right when you're in the line type data and click on wizard. And go to special category and under the category rope slash wire. Click that and go next. And for this problem we're going to use 50 millimeters as the nominal wire diameter. And it's already set. That's a standard Norplex. And for the construction, there's different options. All from uh, rope to uh, wire with fiber core and wire core. And I'm just going to select wire core for this problem. And everything's populated for us. Our weight, the displacement in water, weight in water, and a minimum breaking load, just, and... Uh, and stiffness, just all the properties that would be for that material. And hit next and go to finish. And I'm just going to update the line type name just so I know what it is. Mooring wire. Hit OK. And that's our line type. And it's already set here. So since I want to have the NB anchored, 
you can hit right by uh, hide above seabed where my mouse is right here. You can actually type zero, and there's a this would actually be half the diameter of that wire where the Z coordinate is, but uh, usually I want to just set the Z value to zero, which would uh, pretty much have the end of the wire just a little bit under the C bed, which is fine. It's not going to affect the results much at all. And then next, what we want to do, let's just see where we are. Okay, we want to, just to give myself some room, I'm going ahead and move this guy out on the NB out 100 meters in the positive x direction. And you'll notice now that the line is taut. And if you change that, we can just add more section length uh, right where my mouse is under the line structure. So let's do 200. And you can see that now we have a slack, uh, a little bit of slack in our catenary shape. And you can control the segment length. I'm going to leave it as 10 for now because it's, this is just a simple problem. The node spacing is not important. And I usually like to set the nodes drawn on the line so I can have them as reference where they are. So that would be under drawing. And then nodes draws disk, wireframe. Then that's all we need and hit OK. And Okay, and now we want to analyze our catenary shape for different tensions. So right now we can just run a static case by clicking the yellow arrow up here. I just want to see what the tension is. And as we can see, it is, there. probably my guess would be there's no tension at all. If I were to check the static state result, uh, it's very minimal. So let's go ahead and move this out further. Okay, so the best way to do this is if you have a specific tension that you want to analyze on your mooring wire or, your, or your, any type of line like a riser or rope, you can go up to the calculation on your on your browser up here and click calculation, go all the way down. It's a third from the bottom. It's called line setup wizard. So that what this pretty much does is it will calculate the line lengths that the line needs to be, or it can calculate the anchor position. So it'll move N B since that is anchored on the seabed based on the tension that we target value tension or it could be any of these other variables but for this one we're just going to set the target variable to tension including this only line that's in our model and we want to set some tension value which is in kilonewtons. so I'm just going to calculate line lengths and leave the anchor position there hit calculate and Orcaplex will go through by itself and find where those line lengths need to be to have a top tension of 100 kilonewtons. And after it's done, it'll say line lengths have been found for the specified target values. Model data has been updated accordingly. So now I can go ahead and run the static case. And you can see, if I were to show you the tension again, it's pretty much right at 100 kilonewtons. So that would actually cover most of everything you need to know for calculating a catenary curve. So if you wanted to pull this data off, let me just recalculate this tension, or this uh, top tension using the line setup wizard again. I'm just going to reduce the tension so we have a little bit more of a catenary shape. Maybe a little bit more. Just got to play around with it until it looks right. 
this since this is just an example and for your job or your work in college or side projects you'll have actual data from a client where you'll just input all of this and be able to calculate this curve and this the shape of the line and very quickly okay this is fine this is good enough so if I run stacks again you can see that we have if I go to results again Static result, an end day, effective tension, static state, we have 25 kilonewtons. So if I want to pull this data off, I can do a range graph and grab this, this, uh, the values for the entire line for the static state. I can click on values, which will give me the arc length and the effective tension. And to add to that, I can also grab the, uh, typically it's plotted uh, with tension or water depth on the y-axis and then uh, the arc length on the x-axis. So if I wanted to find the, the vertical coordinates, it would be under positions, the z variable, and we can add to the data I've already uh, extracted from the results by holding the control key then clicking values again and it will add so it didn't do it there well yeah maybe it's because of these separate variables or we have here this extra data that is provided for the tension can't combine different types of variables or results to each other so here we have all the data we need to calculate all this in Excel, which we can save by right-clicking and exporting it to, uh, to an Excel workbook. And we can do this for various different tensions by going to the line setup wizard and rerunning that wizard at the tensions, the top tensions that we need to analyze. One other important thing I should note is that when you're doing this for the the catenary calculation, you need to make sure that end A right here is at the specific x, y, and z coordinates of where the fair leads on the vessels are located so you can get an accurate catenary shape. Otherwise, the, uh, the departure angle can be slightly off, which can affect the results. Okay, and that should conclude this tutorial on how to calculate a simple catenary curve in uh, an orcplex. If you have any questions, feel free to leave comments below.